Hi everyone, let's take a look at number 16 on page 389. Clarence leaves the dock, pedaling a canoe at 3 meters per second. He heads downstream at an angle of 45 degrees to the current, which is flowing at 4 meters per second. Part A, how far downstream does he travel in 10 seconds? And part B, what is the length of time required to cross the river if it is 180 meters wide? Now, before we start, there are a couple of things you want to think about. When you draw a diagram, sometimes the diagram may look something like this, or it may look something like this. Now, it really depends on the context. So, for example, if the question says you're going to the left, or if you're going to the right, then you're really thinking about the first diagram because, again, the current could be flowing either west or east. Or in the second case, if you think about this, again, if there's some kind of upstream, downstream, this is kind of how you set it up. So it really depends on the context. So let's reread -re part A and want to draw the appropriate diagram. Part A, how far downstream does he travel in 10 seconds? So because there's the keyword downstream, the first step is to draw a diagram which looks something like this. Now, here's the key. What does the word downstream really mean? And we're going to talk about it right here. So again, the key here is when they are talking about downstream, how do we make meaning out of this? So downstream is really from here all the way to here. If you go back to the first step, the uh, canoe is moving at three meters per second at 45 degrees. So what I can do is I can draw a vector that looks something like this. Starting from here at 45 degrees, let's label this 45 degrees and it's at three meters per second. Now notice how, again, let's pair everything up. So this three meters per second is 45 degrees to the current. Now there are two ways to think about the current. First of all, when it's 45 degrees, that means the vectors are connected tail to tail. So if I draw this second vector right here, this is basically, again, it's not drawn to scale, but it says four meters per second. Let's go back and highlight this for you. So the current is four meters per second. Now remember, when you try to add these vectors, you have to apply the triangle law. And the triangle law states that you're connecting from head to tail. So again, if I draw a vector from head to tail, it's going to look roughly like that. Again, if I label this, this is going to be four meters per second. So in part A, when they're asking how far downstream does he travel in 10 seconds, you're really looking at the measurement, the top, all the way to the bottom here. So that is the measurement we're going to find in a moment. And of course, downstream, let's try this again, downstream, there we go. Now, here's the first step. You have to draw a diagram, and then the second step is to compose a table. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use components. Again, this is not the only method, but I think this is the best method in terms of this problem. And we'll use components the two ideas that you want to think about. The first idea is you can think about this in terms of vectors. And the second idea is to think about this in terms of a scalar outcome. Again, I'm going to show you a vector approach in this example. So we're going to compose this table. And I'm going to label these two columns as the horizontal component and the vertical component. So again, horizontal component. And that last column is going to be the vertical component. Now you want to be mindful because we're looking at it from a vectors approach right off the bat, you have to distinguish the positive from the negatives. So what that means is if I think about up and down, or if I think about left and right, anytime something is pointing north, that's denoted with a positive symbol. 
likewise is if you're pointing to the right or pointing east that's going to be positive on the other hand if it's pointing south or west or down and left that's going to be negative now i'm going to go back to the beginning here so in the first vector it's going to be three meters per second and it's going to be 45 degrees relative to the current as so i go back i draw this vector that looks like that now you have to break this into components so you can draw two additional vectors one is going to go south that looks like this the other one and again i'll draw this one choice you can point it to the right or you could draw it down here as well using the triangle law so again if you think about the angles i'm going to zoom in for you that's going to be 45 degrees 45 degrees that's going to be three meters per second i'll leave it as three for now and of course there's the horizontal component there's the vertical component again let's make sure no one's left behind if you think about this right angle triangle sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse or sine of 45 degrees is going to be v of x divided by three so you can tell the horizontal component is going to be three sine of 45 degrees now since we're thinking about this from a vector perspective i'm going to put an arrow at the top and i'm going to put a plus sign again the plus sign indicates you're moving to the right so again the plus sign means you're going to the right now if you look at the second component again if i think about this i can write down the following Let's write this down. Cosine of 45 degrees is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's going to be V of Y divided by 3. And in this case, V of Y equals to 3 cosine 45 degrees. Now remember, V of Y is pointing south. So I'm putting a negative sign, which indicates it's pointing down. Now, if you look at the second component, basically it's going to be four meters per second and it's going to go south. So the difference here is even though we're using components and this is going to be four meters south, there are no horizontal components. So you can leave this as zero. And of course, since it's going to go south, the vertical component, Vy, is basically negative four. And again, the four is the magnitude. The negative means it's pointing down. And I'll put an arrow here. Now, I could put the units back. Let's write down meters per second. Same thing here. Same thing here. Okay. Now, what happens when I add this up? If you look at the horizontal component, this will add up to three sine 45 degrees. And again, I'm going to write down the total. You can call this to be Sultan RX, RY, or I'm just going to write down total in this case. And likewise, in the last column, it's going to be negative 3, cosine 45 degrees minus 4. And again, I can put this in brackets. That's going to be meters per second. And uh, if you want to write down RY, you could do that. Let's go back and erase this. Add it back in. RY. Same thing here, this is Rx, and I'll put meters per second like that. Okay, now again, let's divide this into two columns. Let's work it out. So, in the first column, which is part A, the question becomes, what is the distance? Now, since I'm looking at it from a vector perspective, I'll start with uh, displacement equals vector times, or displacement equals velocity times time which means in this case, the displacement equals to, again, negative three cosine 45 degrees minus four times 10. And of course, this is in terms of meter per second. Maybe I'll put it here for you. And this is in terms of time. Let's put it back like that. Meters per second. And this is going to be time, 10 seconds. Okay. Now, again, you can take the calculator, work it out, and this is going to be approximately to one decimal place, negative 
0.2 meters. And again, this negative sign really shows the direction. So the reason why I'm doing this is to demonstrate this is going downstream. And of course, if you just want to find a distance, let's take the magnitude of displacement, which is basically 61.2 meters, just like that. Now, again, in the second column, your goal is to find the time that it takes. So time, of course, is going to be distance divided by speed. So in this case, again, if you go back to the table, uh, we know, again, in part B, what is the length of time required to cross the river if it is 180 meters wide? So in this case, we're looking at 180 meters divided by the speed, which is going to be 3 times sine of 45 degrees in meters per second. Again, if you take a calculator and you work it out, this is going to be approximately 84.9 seconds. Now, if you want to put this in terms of minutes and seconds, uh, one minute is going to be 60 seconds. So this is going to be one minute and approximately 25 seconds. I hope this makes sense.